it will be a short message. There will be a message for this hour. But before I go into the word, into the message for this moment, I just want to also remind, if I may, to two particular messages that God had already given to us. You know, it's important for us to know that God who spoke in the past has not changed. He's still the same. So we have to go back to what he has been speaking. You know, there's one message, and I remember when I preached that message, I said, it has to be from God because I have not spoken from that particular book in my entire life, if I remember it correctly. And this was a word that I got very powerfully. It was deposited into my spirit, just like, you know, without any manufacturing. And then it was confirmed in my sleep in, a, the, most, in the most spectacular manner. The message some of you might remember is what I sp spoke on, called the winter is over and the springtime is here. I wish, I wish I got the tense correctly. Because um, apparently the winter is still here. Now, but when we look at how God speaks, God is not limited by tense. He can say things that are, you know, yet to come as if they are already here. That's God. He's not, he's not chained by our understanding of past, present, and future. You know, beside that, you know, leave that alone. Let's look at what God spoke at that time. Or what was the message? The message was, the time of cease, or the time of winter, the season of winter is such a season where everything will be restricted. There will be no movements of people. You know, there will be no travels. And I don't know if I use the word lockdown, I said people will remain inside homes. It's a holding pattern. And, and there will be no movements. Everything will be hindered. But think about it. We can all agree that particular description fits what we are going through now. No travels, essentially lockdown, people sitting at home, movements curtailed, and the holding pattern. We're just holding. We don't know. We're just, you know, holding on to or just holding in waiting, not knowing what is to come. But and I want you to get this into your hearts. At that point of time, there was one particular word that I kept on hearing which I knew was significant. But even today I'm trying not to make it dramatic. But I thought that was very significant. Even when I was saying that, I felt a confirmation, a witnessing in my spirit. And the word was this. I said when the, the word of God says a springtime, it is connected to a particular feast, and that is the Passover. You might remember that. I said, you know, I sense the Passover time will be significant. And I kept on saying that. You know, there are other reasons why I'm saying that, that are very personal. It's a journey of probably a month or so with that particular word, Passover. Now, I don't know if God is speaking to us in terms of the Passover season that's going to happen, which is the second week of April, around that time, I believe, or he is giving out this tried and tested truth that for any plague, the Passover is the solution. The blood of Jesus Christ is a solution. That's how people walked out of the winter. I even said 400 years of winter in Egypt. They couldn't move out. They couldn't move around. But with the Passover, they came out. So I don't know. It could be that God is telling us something about the time. 
We'll have to wait and see. Or is em emphasizing the solution to this is through the blood of Jesus. I believe that with all of my heart. The other thing I want people to get hold of, hold on to, is the word that I use that God gave us at the beginning of the year. And the word was good wine and glory revealed. But how many of you remember the wine or the good wine was released because there was a need for it? Because everything ran out, God revealed his glory. So I don't see what is happening as contradicting what God spoke. I believe it's only setting it up for the fulfillment of what God spoke. There is a need like never before. The wine is running out. And I remember the Lord told me speci specifically, after a few weeks I spoke on it, I said, it'll also expose the cheap wine. Because people will not receive the cheap wine anymore. It'll be God's good wine. People who are, you know, even ministries, I should say, that was releasing cheap wine when people are drunk. I mean, the discernment is absolutely, you know, kind of compromised. That's when cheap wine comes out. Anything said is received. But I tell you, in this time of crisis, cheap wine will not stand a chance. It has to be the good wine of God. So there will be also, I believe, a certain authenticity to the move of God. That will be very, very clearly demonstrated in this time. Now, you may ask as to what is a message for this hour. Let me give it to you. A very short message, but the, the, the principle, the, 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 the power of God's word and what he intends to speak is absolutely beyond a shadow of doubt. So what is he speaking to us through this? How many of you know the book of Acts is a book of tremendous expressions, experiences of the Holy Spirit in action? There's no debate about it. You know, we see some of the most spectacular healings and miracles, and in fact, the very coming of the Holy Spirit in power is in the book of Acts. But it does not negate the fact that people went through crisis as well. And one of the ways that people went or experienced crisis, especially the servants of God, was when they were put into prisons or jails. Paul went into jail quite a few times. The other apostles went into jail, Peter, John. So I want to look at three particular jail experiences from the book of Acts. Three. Each one is unique and distinctive to the other. So three particular jail experiences. There are more in the book of Acts. But I want to pick just three. And... When you read this, or when we go through this, we'll understand God is sovereign. Even the way he deals with the situation is different in different situations. You can't put God into a box and say, you know what, God? This is how you did the last time, and I expect you to do the same this time. God's ways are higher. His thoughts are greater. I think one of the most powerful embodiment of this truth is this doxology that Paul gives at the end of Romans 11. He says, his ways are past finding out. You can search for eternity, you will not be able to find the ways of God. If somebody says that he knows how God is going to behave, he is lying. Because God has a way of behaving in different situations to his glory. At the end of the day, it's not how he works, it's what comes out of it. So what is he telling us through this experience of three jail experiences? All three 
our jail experiences, no difference in those experiences. But the, the outcome is the same. I should say I'll come to that. But the way God dealt from the experience to the outcome was distinctive in all three cases. So let me bring the first one. So the message is titled, Three Different Jail Experience, the Book of Acts. The first experience is found in Acts 5. Acts 5. And verse number 17. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is a party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. Now, I think some other translation use the word common prison. Now, what does that mean? It means this prison is a prison for everybody. So in terms of the experience, it is absolutely inclusive. The experience is inclusive for Pete, Paul, Peter, John, and there could be a thief there, there could be a murderer there, there could be somebody who's a rapist there. All of them are in a common prison. Now some of us might connect to this particular thing that we are going through. There's no difference. The experience is the same for everybody. Hello? One thing I found interesting is there's no difference between the elite and the non-elite. You know, the Hollywood, the politicians, and the media, it doesn't matter. This virus knows no class distinction. It affects everybody. So this is a public common prison. But what did God do in that? But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the door and brought them out. So it is possible you can go through an inclusive situation with the rest of the world and have an exclusive result. Do you get that? So it is possible. I'm not saying that's what God does every time, but I'm just saying it is possible. You can go through the same situation like your neighbor, but come out with a different outcome. Now where do we see this repeated in the story of how God brought his people out of Egypt? Whatever plagues came to the Egyptians, God protected the Israelites. The Israelites' dwelling place called Goshen was absolutely marked out with no infusion of any of this plague as if the invisible angels of God were standing around and there was an invisible boundary around those people that the plagues could not penetrate. Now can I declare today, our God that we serve can take you through an inclusive experience and bring an exclusive outcome in your life. And I believe that will be seen even in this crisis. I don't know where, but I'm just saying it is possible. Our God can do it. Can I get a witness of people that believe that God can do it? He can draw a line. Look what he does. The entire prison is filled with people, but only two people come out. Now, the way he did it, you know, and, and God's angel said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of his life, of, the, of this life. Now, what is he saying? When God gives you an exclusive result in an inclusive climate, the, 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 the purpose of that is for his word to be heard. This is not for any other luxury. When God deals with you differently, there's only one purpose. Preach the word. Let people hear the word of life. Do you remember this Peter once upon a time told Jesus, where shall I go? Because with you are the words of life. Now that word is coming back to him. The angel said, hey Peter, once upon a time you said Jesus carries the word of life. Now I'm releasing you so you can go and preach this word of life to the people. 
If you believe Jesus Christ is a word of life, God is going to keep you safe and exclusively is going to deal with you so you can be the proponent of this glorious life into the lives of others that really need it now. So how did this work? I don't know how it worked. It defies all physics. Because when they went to look for these guys who were locked in the prison, this is what they found, verse number 22, that when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. But the prison was securely locked. And the guards are still standing there. That means everything that remained till yesterday is now continuing to remain the same way. But something dramatic, extraordinary happened inside. So what I'm trying to say, even when the situation looks the same, God is doing some things with people individually. With his people. The doors are still locked. The guards are still there. There is no essential change to the environment. But the people have been delivered. Miraculously. What a God we serve. Did you hear that? That's the God we serve. Number two. The second prison. So this second prison is the prison where Acts chapter 16 and verse number, you know, 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. Immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bones were unfastened. Here is another prison experience where the experience is inclusive and even the deliverance is inclusive. In the first case, the experience is inclusive, the deliverance is exclusive. In the second case, the experience is inclusive, the deliverance is also inclusive. That means when you come out, you're coming out with your neighbors. You're coming out with people who are in bondage. You are bringing somebody else also out of the situation. But again, what fascinates me is the part where in the first experience, the doors are locked, the prisoners are not there. In the second experience, the doors are open, the prisoners are still inside. That is interesting. How do you expect the prisoners to stay inside when the doors are open. So remember the first experience, the doors are locked, the prisoners are out. The ones that God has to bring them. In the second experience, the doors are still open, but the prisoners are inside. Why would that be? That shows, just listen to this carefully, just a deliverance is not God's plan through all this. God has a purpose. If it was just deliverance, they would have walked out. Paul and Silas would have said, look what the Lord has done for us. And take few prisoners and walk out. But that was not God's plan. God said, stay in. Now why would God do that? You need to understand, sometimes... When crisis comes, we only think about deliverance. We don't focus on God's purpose. Let me tell you, even in this crisis, God is devising his purposes. That cannot be, you know, questioned. So what is the purpose behind it? Why would God send an angel, bring an earthquake and make them worship in the middle of the night and give them deliverance and stay, tell them to still stay quarantined. Inside. Why would God do that? Because in this situation, the people that need to be saved are in the inside. 
So God had to place them so that the word of God can be preached. So what am I trying to say? God knows what to do with each deliverance. At the end of a day, somebody needs to get saved. Can I get a witness in this? House? So look what it says. At the at w- uh, verse number, you know, so what happened? The jailer, he tried to commit suicide. If the prisoner had left, there would have been a suicide. You know, we need to start acting and walking a walk based on God's purpose. Because if Paul and Silas, assuming that this is the way God is delivering them, had left the jail with few prisoners and they had all right to do it, this prisoner would have committed suicide and ended his life. But God in his great plan, he was not looking, the outcome is not your deliverance and somebody's suicide. The outcome is somebody's salvation, that somebody will get saved and through that man, a city shall be saved. Come on, can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Can we celebrate the sovereignty of God, the purpose of God in all of this situation? God is still controlling the affairs. So they say the first church was in his house. And because of that, Philippines get saved. And because of that, a nation is touched. And because of that, Paul could go to Corinth. Because of that, Paul could go to Thessalonica and other places because this church supported him. God's plan is bigger. So can you make a declaration today, God, at the end of the day, it's not that I survived this crisis, it's that your purpose was fulfilled in my life through this crisis. Can I get a shout of hallelujah in the house? I think I'll have to slow down. I'm preaching to many people who might be. Uh, but I'm excited. Because that's what the Bible says. In the first experience, inclusive, exclusive deliverance. Second experience, inclusive but inclusive deliverance, but God put them in till his plan is completed. So church, whether we are here for one day or for one month, we will come out with God's plan being accomplished. Because it's not the virus deciding our destiny. It is God who is above this controlling our destiny. Can I get a witness in the house? So that's the second one. But the third one that I'm going to say is the most strangest of all. And I believe that fits into our situation. How many of you sometimes say, God, let the whole world get this, but show that you care for us. But sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes it happens. I still believe God is going to watch over our people. But some of the circumstances and the limitations that others are, we are also going through it. And the best example is today, I'm preaching to so many chairs. But God is in this house. So what is the third jail experience? The third jail experience is, so can we put the first two into our minds? Inclusive crisis, exclusive deliverance. Second one, inclusive crisis, inclusive deliverance. The third one is found in Acts chapter 28. Acts 28. Paul is in prison. Where is he now? He's in Rome. But this prison, you know, It doesn't look like a prison. What we can call it is more like a house arrest. But still he can't go out. Because he's now a captive of the Roman government. He can't go out. So what they did was, Paul arrives in Rome in chapter 28, and the verse says in 8.16, And when we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself 
with the soldiers that guarded him. So he's staying with himself. So there is a certain exclusivity to his experience. He's not with every other prisoner. Staying separate. How many of you know that I call it a favor? See, through all this crisis, we are looking at what all is going wrong. And I tell you, you don't have to debate with me. Don't even start. I know a lot of things are going wrong. In fact, almost everything is going wrong. But even in this crisis, can you say, I see the faithfulness of God? There is a favor of God. Paul, you are in Rome. Why do you think they will allow you to stay by yourself with some favor and then you have got a soldier standing out? True it is, with all favor you are still inside the house. Now how many of you can agree with me? That's our situation. We carry God's favor but we are shut inside. We are like many people, shut inside, but it's a kind of different jail experience. It's not like the people are there, but for us, we still have favor. How many of you can say, that's our experience? We still have favor of God. So Paul is experiencing an exclusive treatment in the situation. And then the Bible says, verse number 22 onwards. When they had appointed day for him, they came to him at his lodging in great numbers. From morning till evening, he expounded to them, testifying to the king to, to, to them, testifying to the kingdom of God, trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Even in this jail situation, he's getting a big audience. I want you to know this. Whatever jail you are, God will still accomplish his purpose. He's getting a bigger audience in the jail than on the road. Now I want you to get this into your hearts. The third experience is, you know, God is taking an exclusive experience of Paul and turning it into inclusive fathers. And I want to declare today, if God is showing you favor, even in this situation, get ready. Somebody is getting saved. Numbers are coming. I started rejoicing in my spirit today as I was, you know, in the worship time. Because the Lord started speaking to my heart, son, it might look like everything is locked in and you are also, with my favor, you are still in a jail. But receive this. Through this experience, greater numbers are coming. Can I get somebody to believe it? Greater numbers are coming. I'm declaring it across the globe. I'm declaring it for our church. I'm declaring it for our ministry. Greater numbers are coming. Even in this jail experience, God can bring greater numbers. A God who made all the animals to walk into the ark of Noah. He's the same God. He's going to bring people from the streets, people from other places to enter into the ark of salvation. Even in this experience, when you feel you're locked in, God is still touching people in this experience. Can I get a shout of hallelujah in the house? You can praise God even in your living room. God will bring his purpose through this lockdown. Look what it says. Great, I like the word greater numbers. So can I ask somebody to believe this? That even through this, can you imagine, this is how people treat a prisoner. He is Mr. Nobody in Rome. He doesn't even have influence in Rome. He is a, he is a prisoner. And how many of you know, four of his books were written from this prison. Philippians, Colossians, you know, Philemon and Ephesians. From this prison. It was really a prison. But in that prison, he gets, he gets appointments. People are coming in. When you can't go out, God is sending people in to receive the word. 
Now, can I see somebody who believes that your God is above all limitations? If you believe that, can you give a lot of praise in the house of God? He's above every limitation. What you think is limitation to the ministry is God's way of adding more numbers, greater numbers, and greater salvation in the name of Jesus. Somebody say yes in the house of the Lord. God is in control even when you are in the jail. But what is the outcome of it? Why did this happen? Three things I saw, which is common in all three experiences. Number one, why did God send them out? Go and preach the word of life. The word of God must come out. In Acts, why did God not send them out? Even after the miracle? So the word of God can be preached inside. And the Bible says the jailer received the word. And he and his family got baptized. And they rejoiced. For hearing the word. From suicide to rejoicing. But in this case, why did God put Paul in a prison? And the Bible says, look what it says. What was the prison? At his lodging, they say. Okay, can you read verse number 30? 30. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him. His prison became a crusade. His prison became the platform for God to touch. What came out of it? Look, it says, next to us, Proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. You think, because I'm hindered, God is hindered too. But I'm going to declare today, even in your hindrance, God doesn't have hindrance. God's word doesn't have hindrance. God's power doesn't have hindrance. Can I get a shout of hallelujah in the house? God's move does not have a hindrance. Every purpose of God still is absolutely unhindered. Just because a virus came, God's plans are still working. It's not hindered. And Paul makes it clear. Where does he bring this truth? He brought this truth as a statement of truth in Philippians 1.12. This is what he says about his experience in that prison. Philippians 1.12, and I want to rejoice. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Can I ask the church to believe everything that happened? If God is in control, even your deliverance is going to be His plan, His working. If God is in control, it will serve His purpose. I want the church to say the word advance. advance. The gospel is going to advance. The ministry is going to advance. So what happened? Look what happened. And most of the brothers, so it that became known throughout the whole imperial guard, all the royal guards came to know about the gospel. And to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. God can take you through a situation and bring his purpose out. And look next to it. And most of the brothers having become confident in the Lord, my imprisonment, are much more bold. You think after all this, the people are going to lose morale? People are going to discourage? I declare a mighty, mighty, great army is going to rise up. Because it's in the jail that strong people come out. A greater, mightier army that is more bolder for Christ is going to rise up across the globe. I pray that this message reach to the ends of the earth. Let it reach all the nations of the earth. Christianity is not going to die. Mightier, greater servants of God are going to rise up through this crisis. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That's what I believe.
Can I ask my friends in India, in other parts of the world? Belief. Because of this jail experience, because of this prison kind of an experience, one, the gospel is only going to spread. Two, there's going to be greater, bolder servants of God that are going to rise up from this, who will not fear for their life, but stand firm. Who will stand firm for Jesus Christ and going to rise up from this. But why is it so, you may ask. You know why? The simple truth. You can be quarantined. Your church can be restricted. All the physical things can be limited. But one thing that no government, no devil can stop, the word of God is still unhindered. The word of God does not have change. And as long as the word of God is unhindered, that word is going to work. It's going to save. It's going to deliver. So three jail experience. The first one, you know, inclusive, exclusive deliverance. Second one, inclusive, inclusive deliverance. Third one, exclusive, but inclusive outcome. What a God we serve. Can I pray for you? No matter what your jail experience is, God is in control. His purpose will come out. So I'm going to pray for you. Wherever you are, I'm going to pray for two things. Number one, and I'm praying for your protection. At the same time, I'm going to pray that God will also protect your finances. Your goods and your wealth shall be protected in this time. But let me tell you, if God gives you a, a process, a way through this, which is his purpose, hang in there. Glory will come out of it. Good things are going to come out. At the end of the day, he is in control. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for our church and those who are watching us. Lord, it's kind of a jail situation where our movements have been hindered. But we declare, trusting in your goodness, that your word is still unhindered. Doesn't matter what kind of a jail experience is ours, we believe your word will come out. People are going to be set free. Churches are going to be birthed. More ministers are going to come out of it. We declare that for our church, and I believe greater numbers. When this cry is over, greater numbers. We believe that. Lord, watch over your people as they enter into another week. Give your wisdom to direct their steps. Let them only get engaged in matters that they need to. If the matter is not important, keep them out of it, Lord. That you will lead them by your spirit. And wherever you lead them, there will be protection for your people. Lord, let there be the first experience for many of our people. That even though it's inclusive, that they will have exclusive protection. Exclusive favor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. I pray for jobs. Wealth, Lord, protection of finances. Please watch over your people. Lord, I don't know what to tell them, but I believe you are still in control. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. Lord, I bless your people in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and everybody said, My precious people, I love you. We love you. You know, my heart still is in pain that I'm not able to meet, see many of you. But just hang in there. This too shall pass. And we shall come together with great shouts of joy. And through all this, we will know that our God is still on the throne. So just stay there. Consider this as the Sabbath days for your life. God is giving you time to spend with him quietly and in the busyness of life, you get moments just to be with him. Sabbath is God's ordained law and we get to celebrate that. And one thing that was so interesting for me to watch, the, the birds and the animals are getting back into, into, the, into the waters, into the streets. This is exactly what God told Israelites. 
You have to give rest to the land. If you don't give, I will take you out and give rest to the land. And let me tell you, we are called to find rest in Christ, even in these days. So don't worry. Maybe God is giving us a time to spend with him. You know, read more. Read the scriptures. Spend time with him as the Lord would give you grace. But just know he is still in control. You know, this virus has penetrated homes across the globe, but still has not reached into heaven, into the presence of God, because he reigns from there. As blazing, glorious sunshine, he burns everything. And very soon, heaven will touch earth with the power of God. Hallelujah. So be blessed. We left tons of testimonies of God's goodness in the days to come. I love you. If you're watching me from other parts of the world, I bless you in the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us. Next week, we are still, you know, we are not sure, but we will trust the Lord. No matter if there's any chance, we will declare the word of God. God bless you. Have a safe time with your family members and brothers. Love you.